We're given two curves, y equals ln of x, and y equals 5 minus x, and I've labeled them f and g in case we need to make a shorthand reference to them. That along with the x-axis gives us a region r, and it's about r that we're going to be dealing. We have to first find the area of the region, then we're going to make a cross-sectional volume, then we're going to answer a slightly trickier question about the area. So I've included all of the formulas that relate to areas and volumes, even though we won't need all of them. But let's turn to part A, where we're supposed to find the uh, area uh, the area of the region. Well, the area between curves formula tells us that we need a, a greater curve and a lesser curve, and that what we're really building are rectangles, infinitesimally thin rectangles between those two curves. Since the functions themselves are already given in terms of x, our natural inclination is to make these infinitesimal rectangles like this, so that the variable of integration is x. But if you think about it, that means that while the lesser curve is going to be the x-axis in both cases, we're actually going to need to use both of these curves in turn as the greater curve. And the crossover point is going to be the intersection right here. So we're going to have to find that intersection point. I'm going to label it A and B so we can store the values in A, B. I've already put the formulas in the calculator. What we need is the intersection point. So let's go ahead and calculate that. And our guess. Okay, so we get an intersection at 3.69 blah blah blah. Okay, we want to save that intersection point. So you quit out of the intersect program, and then you just uh, reiterate what x is, and then you say you want to store that in a. So that takes care of that. To store the y value in b, we just uh, invoke the y function, either one of these functions will work because we're trying to find their intersection point, and then we simply um, we simply uh, recall the first intersection value. And that gives us our y value and we'll store that in b. So now we've got these two points. I'm going to just write them out. We have that a equals what did we get? 3.6934 and b equals 1.3066. Now we're in a position to calculate this area. So again, it's going to be the uh, greater curve minus the lesser curve first an integral from 0 to a using the greater curve which is ln x minus the lesser curve which is just 0 plus we then need the integral from a to 5 you know I said 0 but in fact x is going to go from 1 1 to a plus a to 5 of the secondary curve the g of x and so I'll write 5 minus x, again minus the x-axis, which is 0. Don't really need to put the 0 in in either case, but just to make it clearer what two curves are being compared. 
So this is what we need to evaluate numerically. This is the area. And so we get the area equals. Now we're going to have to do this integral on the calculator. So what is that? That is the integral function, which I always retrieve from the catalog, but you can grab from other places if you see fit. There's the integral function. We're going to start at 1. We're going to go up to the value a. Our function is going to be y1. And we'll integrate with respect to x. Okay, that's going to be our first calculation. Then we're going to add to that the next integral. So we go back to the integral function. And that is right down here. Let's get that function. This time we're going to start at the a value. So we'll recall a. go up to 5. Now our function is going to be our second choice. So we'll go down to y2. And again we're going to integrate with respect to x. That answer we're going to store in C. Now we've got all the numbers, 2.9858 we'll put in. So the area is approximately 2.9858. Now, we could in fact have done this problem a different way. And I'm just going to show this, even though you obviously only need to show it one way on the uh, exam. And that is, we could go back to um, this region, and instead of slicing it up uh, vertically, we can slice it up horizontally. So let's try that. So slicing horizontally, what do we have? We have... vertical bars like this. Then we're integrating with respect to y. That's going to be dy. So I'm going to just say alternatively Okay. Now what's the advantage of this? The advantage is that we don't have to do two separate integrals because what now constitutes the greater curve is this line and what constitutes the lesser curve is this line. That's the, uh, the distance between the curves is the gap that these infinitesimal rectangles bridge. And so we can do the integral dy just a single integral. But what do we have to go from? Here we have to go from the y value uh, start to the y value stop. So that's going to be 0 to b. Incidentally, and we, we define that area as c. Let's just keep that in mind. Okay. So now what are the curves? Well, 
we know this is the greater curve and this is the lesser curve, but we have to express this in terms of y. So if we say y equals 5 minus x, then x is going to be 5 minus y. Let's just write that out. y equals 5 minus x tells us that we could rewrite that as x equals 5 minus y. And the function ln x, y equals ln x, we can rewrite as x equals e to the y, just because we know those are inverses. So now our greater curve is 5 minus y, and our lesser curve is e to the y. So if we evaluate this numerically, what's that going to give us? Well, we're going to have to put those functions in. So let's uh, try this again. Let's try the integral. in this case from 0 up to the value that we stored for b. And now we have to do a top minus a bottom function. So that's going to be 5 minus y, but we're integrating with respect to to y. So I'm going to put it in as 5 minus x. Minus our lesser curve, e to the y, but I'm going to put it in as e to the x. And then even though we are integrating with respect to y, since we've put our y values in as x's into the calculator, we're going to write it dx. So let's see what value we get there. And in fact, the value we get, we can compare to the value that we stored. And the 1 minus the other is very, very close to 0. So we get the same value in both cases. I'll just write that in. 2.9858. So there are two ways that we can handle this. Let's move on to part B. Now what do we have here? Now we're going to do a cross-sectional area. And I've uh, illustrated this ahead of time because I'm not very good at drawing these things. This is what they're asking for. Let's just review what the text says. Okay, We're going to be creating a solid with this region as its base. And then the solid is squares where each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. Perpendicular to the x-axis means we're going this way. And so this slice gets projected out into a square. And that's what I've got pictured here. And then we're going to integrate over all the different squares with their infinitesimal cross-sections dx in this case. So we have to set up that integral. That's going to be the integral from 0 and again to a dx of a square as a function of x plus the integral from you know, I said 0, and again, I mean 1. 
a to 5 again of the cross-sectional area of a square in terms of x. Well, what is that square? First, up until this point, this square's side, right, cross-sectional area of a square is going to be the side squared in both these cases. Okay. And the side in this case is ln x minus 0. So what we really have is 1 to a ln x squared plus a to 5. Now our sides, when we get over into this regime, the sides are the 5 minus x going to have to be squared. A fair amount to think about, but obviously nothing to actually have to calculate. Let's go on to part C. Hopefully we have room here. I did uh, draw this figure in. And I'll just... Uh, move it down a little. Okay, there we go. Now, we have to find a line, y equals k, that cuts our area in half. The good news is we only have to write a formula for it. We don't actually have to solve for it. And in addition, they tell us that it can involve an integral, one or more integrals. So basically, we're going to be forced to deal with infinitesimal rectangles in this direction. So the infinitesimal has got to be dy, and then we're going to have to integrate up till we get to that point k. And so the formula that we're going to write is the integral from 0 to k, whatever that k is, of these infinitesimal rectangles, the greater curve minus the lesser curve. Again, we're going to be integrating dy. So the greater curve we determined was 5 minus y. The lesser curve was e to the y. That has to equal c over 2, where this was our choice, our value for c.